Welcome to another top five here at MacGuffinPodcast.com. I am Brandy. And I'm Leonardo. Yeah. <laughs> um, ready for Halloween? Yes. We have uh, Alan here in costume as Leonardo. You can just call him Leonardo, though. Cowabunga dudes. <laughs> yeah. I guess I should say, what is it that Wednesday says in the Adams Family? I'm a homicidal maniac. I look just like the rest of you. <laughs> that, that'll be my excuse for not having a costume. <laughs> That's a fine. That's yeah. a fine reason. Yep. Well, anyway, this Halloween week we are here to discuss our top five directors we wish would make a horror movie. Yes, I think absolutely. That, you know, there's a lot of talk all the time about what's what's next for horror, this and that. These are directors who either have never made a horror movie or haven't made one in a long time, mm -hmm. and we think their voices should be heard in the next movement of horror. Horror is such an awesome genre, and these directors, I feel, should you know put their hand in it or put their hand back into it you yeah. know and make another awesome movie so yes awesome. okay so i'll start my number five pick is a director who is known for sort of creating these tense actiony type films and that is paul greengrass oh okay. um i think you know he's in the second two born movies um he's known also for united 93 and green zone and i think you know he could take some of that sort of in your face, shaky cam, action sensibility, and totally make it work mm -hmm. in in a horror film. I think it would be great. It would be it would be pretty cool to see. Um, you know, I'm not the biggest fan of like the handheld shaky cam, um, and Paul Greengrass is definitely known for that. Mm -hmm. um, I can totally imagine like him like following a slasher like this, like <laughs> going all crazy and everything. Um, well, don't you think it could work for something in the sort of like Cloverfield, Blair Witch kind of area? Like, yeah, you know? yeah, de yeah, definitely. I mean, if you were definitely to jump into that kind of style of horror, I'm sure he would do something really, really good. So yeah. do it, Paul. Do it. All right. Speaking of Paul's, my number five pick is Paul Thomas Anderson. Mm. There Will Be Blood, you can say, is kind of like a psychological horror film already. Um, I just feel like he is the kind of director that can present something like a an idea and have something like bubble underneath it some sort of like menace in the same way that kubrick did it um from you know boogie nights to like magnolia even something like um punch drunk love it was you know a, a love story but it was more than a love story and i think paul thomas anderson can create a horror film that's more than just a horror film you know <laughs> i'm having a really hard time taking you seriously right now <laughs> Yes. Would it be better if I PTA, had my swords? PTA, make a horror film. <laughs> okay, All right. moving on. Okay. My number four, uh, I picture this director making a horror comedy. Mm, okay. Because I think that she has made comedies before that are just a little bit elevated. Like They do that thing with the wacky characters, but keeping it all um, in line. And that's Penelope Spheris. Okay. You know, I, I recently watched Wayne's World again for the first time and, and wrote um, an article about it for the site. And I was so impressed because it really holds up. Mm -hmm. And I think that kind of tone is what you need to make a sort of timeless horror comedy. And a lot of people try to pull off the horror comedy. And every once in a while you have a gem, you know, you have your Shaun of the Dead or something like that. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people do it and it's just you know, it's not that good. It just doesn't work. So I think you need someone who can do silliness but take it seriously. Mm -hmm. And just in general, I would like to see her directing more narrative films because I think she she's fun. She's a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree 100%. I mean, horror comedy is way i would say even more difficult than just horror itself yeah. because you have to balance both the the scares and the laughter um a lot of people have tried to do it and a lot have failed at it mm -hmm. um i think what uh, Shaun of the dead is the perfect example um i think she can definitely with her track record can make something up to that or even better than that mm -hmm. so get back to working yeah. <laughs> let's see something come on all this right. is a very accusatory list. Okay? <laughs> like, why haven't you done this yet? Seriously. What's the matter with you? <laughs> All right, moving on to my number four director. My number four director I chose because I think his visual sense would work perfect in the horror genre, and it is Terry Gilliam. Okay. From yeah. Brazil to 12 Monkeys, Fear and Loathing, Fisher King. I mean, moving on, like <laughs> everything, you know. He has such like a unique 
sensibility, you know, um, visually, uh, all of his camera angles and er how everything is sort of like this twisted, like hallucinatory, hallucinatory uh, <laughs> feel to it. Um, I mean, I think if he took, if he tackled the horror genre, it'd be something that would be really, really twisted and weird, but awesome at the same time. Yeah, um, I love that idea. I know he he really has trouble making films uh you know there's plenty of stories of him trying to make something that just falls apart but if I'm he were to... pretty sure it's easier to get financing for a horror movie yeah <laughs> terry gilliam come on just go just go to the producer and be like okay i want to do a straight-up horror film and i'm sure he'd get backing for that mm. so all right <laughs> i'm just now all we have to do is wait yeah um <laughs> My number three is director I also picked mostly for the visual sensibility, um, and that is Alfonso Cuaron. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, you know, I think he, he's shown that he can do some darker stories, um, you know, <laughs> stuff that goes on in like a little, even in The Little Princess, that's just, that's just <laughs> fucked up. What yeah. happens to that little girl? Mm -hmm. And, you know... Uh, Arguably the best film of the Harry Potter series has to balance a lot of action with a lot of character stuff mm -hmm. And you know, of course, he's he's made just a bunch of really amazing films and mm -hmm. um, Yeah, I would love to see him take that camera skill and apply it to creating the kind of tension that you need in a horror film Yeah, I think he is a superb technical director um, and like you said but men mentioning those films he's really good at adapting and changing yeah. his style I mean he doesn't like take something and then change it to fit him he changes to fit the work yeah and if he were to tackle horror it would be really really awesome um, he's supposedly making something called gravity that's a sci-fi thriller mm. I don't know maybe that'll cross over into some some horror territory it'd be really interesting mm -hmm. to see Moving on to my number three, uh, my number three director that I want to see make a horror film kind of already is in there or is about to jump back into it. He's making Prometheus next year and it is Ridley Scott. Hmm. Ridley Scott honestly made one of the greatest horror films ever in Alien and knowing that he's going back into the sci-fi horror genre, I think it's just... To me, it feels like it's something that he's really passionate about. Mm -hmm. um, you know, all of his other work is is good. You know, I, I like them, but you can tell that he's not really. It, it doesn't feel like he's putting his whole like soul into it, like Blade Runner or, or Alien again. Um, so knowing that he's going back to his roots, just it makes me really excited. I, I really <laughs> I can't wait for that movie next year. It's one of my most anticipated films. So, awesome. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, my number two is another director who's just made so many films and so many different genres, and he's made a couple things that are sort of creepy, but nothing that actually, like, really fits in horror, and mm. that is Steven Soderbergh, mm. who we have talked about in another top five, and, you know, I think you could even make a little bit of an argument that Bubble was sort of like a quasi-horror. <laughs> a little, yeah, a little um, creepy, a little creepy. Yeah, but not not quite like not a full blown horror movie. And after watching Contagion, I feel like if he combined the two sorts of approaches that he used in those two movies, um, such taut storytelling with such a creepy atmosphere, mm -hmm. then you could have an awesome horror film. Yeah, I think it's actually kind of surprising that he hasn't made a horror film because, or a straight up horror film, because yeah. this is a guy who wants to do everything. You know, mm -hmm. he he tackles a whole bunch of genres a whole bunch of, you know, storylines and techniques. You would think that horror being so popular that it is that he would just jump right in and, and put his own, like, spin on it. Um, yeah, so Steven Soderbergh, before you retire, make a horror film. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> the whole retiring thing. Yeah, I know. Whatever. <laughs> okay, moving on to my number two. My number two director is a filmmaker who was big in the horror genre and kind of left it for a while. David Cronenberg... Please return to the horror genre. You know, I, I really like his his recent stuff. I, I liked History of Violence. I liked Eastern Promises. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to a dangerous method. But come on, let's let's go back to the brood. Let's go back to <laughs> Videodrome and the fly. Oh, even fly. even so existence good. existence <laughs> existence. existence. <laughs> uh, you know, I want to see something like that. I mean, whatever happened to like long live the new flesh, you know? Apparently it only lived for like a couple like years and then he moved on to something else. <laughs> 
you know, David Cronenberg, he's so tied to the horror genre and he's doing his own thing. I, I just want to see him return and, and give us something crazy again, you know, so. Yeah, I mean, anything that he makes, I'm curious to see. And mm -hmm. if he said, I'm going to go back and do a full-blown horror film, I would be very excited. Yes. <laughs> Uh, my number one, a director who actually comes in a bit of a package, that is Joel Cohen of the Cohen ah, Brothers, yes, you know, yes. he's always the credited director, um, and, you know, you could argue as well for these guys that they've touched upon things that have a little bit of horror like in them. Like No with Country? The, yeah, yeah, I would even say there's some stuff in Blood Simple that, mm -hmm. that goes that, that route, but they've never made straight up horror, and I, you know, they're, they also, they try so much stuff, and it would be great if they could could bring that level of intensity th mm -hmm. that they have in something like No Country for Old Men to something that, that they could market as straight up horror. Mm -hmm. I would even go so far <clears throat> as saying that they could even do something like like a, a horror comedy because all of sure. like a lot of their films really have this weird sense of like quirkiness and yeah. it's supposed they to be like taken dark, seriously but it has like a, yeah, a, a dark comedy like a, sort of like thing Barton going on. Kind of Bar Barton Fink, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, I would definitely, I would be first in line to see that movie <laughs> for real. So, all right. Yep. Moving on to my number one. My number one filmmaker made one of the most influential horror films of all time and he kind of moved away from it and I want to see him come back. That film was Jaws and the mm. filmmaker was Steven Spielberg. Steven Spielberg is a filmmaker who can make anything he wants, you know, and yep. <laughs> and he's such good technically and his visuals are so great and it just feels like, I mean, yes, he has done like Jaws. Some say he really directed Poltergeist and he's had his hand in producing other films as well. Um, I, I just want to see him tackle something that could be so good for him uh, on that, t in, with his abilities, you mm -hmm. know, like just... Uh, I, I don't know, like just imagining it, you know, yeah. it'd be great. I have to say also that a lot of times horror movies are a little bit smaller in scope and it would be kind of fun to watch him scale back a little bit because I feel like every movie he makes is bigger than the last one. You know, now they're creating this whole world for Tintin and everything and I just, like, I would like to see him go, like, back to basics. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Steven Spielberg, we know you love, like, World War II and, and, and stuff for, like, the whole family, but... Come on, man. Just just go back, you know. <laughs> go back to freaking, like, your Jaws days and everything. Find that person inside of you, that young man, and bring him back out and oh. tackle the horror genre. Go around calling him old if you want him to do what you want. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> go back to that person who's, yeah, yeah, that inexperienced anyway. director or whatever. So. Well, ten awesome directors who we would love to see dabbling in the horror genre, a favorite here at yes. MacGuffinPodcast.com. Tell us who you would like to see making Absolutely. a horror film. Absolutely. There's a film. lot of directors out there, so it'd be nice to see what people have to say. So Yes. Let um, us know your dream project at MacGuffinPodcast.com. And, and have a good Halloween. Yes. Right? A good, safe Halloween. <laughs> and we'll see you next time. Later.